Rex Stout's Nero Wolf. Starring Mabel Moore as Nero Wolf and Don Franks as Archie Goodwin. episode, Counterfeit for Murder, with special guest stars Joy Coghill, Brent Carver, Gilly Fennick, Lynn Griffin, and Sandy Webster. I was on my way out to deposit a check in Nero Wolf's bank account when I saw her through the frost on the one-way glass panel of the front door. Now, my rule is, never be rude to anyone unless you mean it. But when I saw her there on the stoop, her gray hair straggling all over her dirty face and her coat missing a strategic button, well, I meant it. I don't want any, thanks. You would have once, Buster. Thirty years ago, I was a real treat. My, how time flies. Hey, wait! I want to see Nero Wolf, the detective. Sorry. Do I gotta walk right through you? Uh, there are difficulties, lady. One, I'm bigger than you are. Two, Mr. Wolf only sees people by appointment. Three, he won't be available till 11 a.m. Four, my watch says 10. I'll come in and wait. No. I'm hot froze. No go. Listen, are you nailed down? I'm just fascinated. What's your name? My name's Annis. Hattie Annis. What do you want to see Mr. Wolf about? Listen, I'll tell him when I see You'll him. You'll have to tell me, Mrs. Annis. Miss Annis. Oh, I'm sorry. My name's Archie Goodwin. I'm Mr. Wolf's assistant. I know who you are. Oh. And if you think I look as if I can't pay Nero Wolf, there's going to be a reward and I'll split it with him. Now, you want a reward, you go to the police. Listen, I wouldn't trust no cop if he was a baby and stark naked. I got it. Right here in my purse. What have you got? I'll tell Nero Wolf. Listen, Buster, I'm no Eskimo. Let the lady in, will you? No, it's no go. We got strict rules around here. Oh. Go around the corner and have a coffee or duck into the cleaners and have them fix that coat button. What? Come back at 11.15 and maybe Mr. Wolf will see you. That's all I can do. Okay. Okay, I'll be back. You keep this package for me, but Oh, uh, what's in it? It won't bite. And don't you open it till I get back. I don't want no cop to get hold of it. I don't know why I took it, except that she trusted me. Which meant she had fine instincts and no sense at all. Could have been a bomb, but it didn't tick, so I just stashed it under the couch in the front living room and went off on my errand, thinking maybe it was the Hope Diamond and I should have put it in the office safe. I was so worried by the time I got back to the front door of the old brownstone that I almost tripped on a fur coat on the top step before I noticed somebody was sitting in it. It's a terrific idea, this outdoor waiting room. But you ought to install a magazine rack. She was the kind of girl Hattie Annis might have been 30 years ago. Right age, right face, right legs, so far as I could see. I decided to invite her inside so she could take her coat off. Well, welcome to the office. I'll sit here. You, you can sit there. A man told me through a crack in the door that Mr. Wolf was engaged and Mr. Goodwin was out. Mr. Goodwin, I presume? You do, but it's okay by me. Your turn. My name is Tammy Baxter, short for Tamiris. I haven't decided yet which one to use in the marquee when I'm a star. Well, that would depend. Uh, if it's a musical, Tammy. Mm -hmm. But if it's Lady Macbeth, Tamiris. Hey, thanks. Don't mention it. Why don't you ask me what I want? I'm putting it off because I may not have it. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Mm. That's a good line if you knew how to read it. Okay, how's this? What do you want? Mm. Don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> I'm not an actress yet, only going to be. Oh. I don't want much, just ask about my landlady, Miss Annis. Hattie Annis? Has she been here? Here? When? This morning. I'll ask Fritz, the housekeeper. Fritz! A male housekeeper? He's also the chef. Mr. Wolf doesn't like women around the house. Can I be of assistance, Mr. Goodwin? Oh, Fritz, uh, Mr. Brenner, did anyone besides this lady come in while I was out? Uh, no, sir, no one. Any phone calls? No, sir. Oh, 
Thank you very much, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. No, thank you, sir. Well, apparently not, Miss Baxter. That's funny. She said she was going to take something to... I'm worried. Why should you worry? Uh, you would if you knew her. She almost never leaves the house, never goes more than a block away. She's no loony, you know, but she's not quite all there. And we all feel responsible for her. Oh? It's a boarding house. Oh. A dump, almost. But anybody in show business or trying to be can get a room there, even if you don't pay every week. I only hope she's... Well, if she comes, will you phone me? Oh, sure, sure, if if you'll give me your phone number. <laughs> oh, my, you read that line wrong, too. <laughs> Got your little black book handy? I don't care if it is the Hope Diamond in that package, Archie. I will not see your Miss Annis. But when you see her, Mr. Wolf... I'm not going to see her. I have letters to dictate to you, one about a, a rare orchid they found in Brazil, no. And, and, and no unpunctual elderly delinquent uh, is going to interrupt... Maybe a witch can be 20 minutes late. A what? Maybe something happened to her broomstick. No, no, of course, nobody believes in witches anymore. Certainly I don't. But now I'm not so sure... She she has this strange fascination. You know, have I got a screw loose? Uh, yes. Uh, a witch, you're saying? Well, she must be. I'm bewitched. All right, I'll give her two minutes, but not unless she flies here within the next five. Otherwise, I shall go and sample Fritz's yeah, chestnut that, soup. That'll be her now. I'll go and get it. Remember, two minutes. It was her, all right, looking as if she'd been hit by a car. Turned out she'd been hit by a car. I caught her as she passed out and carried her onto the couch in the front room. Now, there's no chair in there big enough to hold Nero Wolf's seventh of a ton, but he was a good sport about it. I am perfectly capable of standing for two minutes, Archie. Oh, you don't look it. You do fine for full stairs. I... I take it you are feeling better, Miss Annis. Yeah. You told Mr. Goodwin a car came up over the curb and hit you. Not hard enough to knock me down. The curb spoiled his aim and I jumped. And the car went on. Yeah. I'd just gone home to sew that button back on my coat after your crack about my appearance busted. <laughs> and I almost got back here when that... Did you see who was driving the car? No, no. He come up behind me. Or she did. So I stumbled back here and I rang the bell. And I got you before you hit bottom. And I missed out again. What? Carried in the arms of a man, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> oh, what's life up to? <laughs> Madam, I told Mr. Goodwin I would give you two minutes. Let us make the most of them. Oh, some wonderful day. Buster here carries me over the threshold, <laughs> and full staff gives me two minutes. <laughs> hey, and here's another one with coffee. Oh, thank you, Fritz. You're quite welcome, sir, uh, for the lady. Yeah, if you please, Fritz, yes. Hey, I like him. Miss Annis, Mr. Goodwin tells me you have something you think is good for a reward. What is it? Do you happen to know that all stage people are crazy? Uh, they have no monopoly. Thank you, Fritz. Yes, sir. Hey, that's good coffee, Fritz. Thank you, madam. I like them. I was born in this house on 42nd Street. I always lived there. And my father owned a theater. You see, stage people are special. They always have been. And that house is only eight minutes' walk from Times Square. Hell, I only need one room in a kitchen so they can live there. They pay me when they can. Well, who lives there now, Miss Annis? Five of them. Huh? The three men and two girls. And they all use the kitchen and keep their rooms decent. At least they're supposed to. I never go in. My room's on the second floor front. You if see, you I... please, madam, to the point... I'll get there, Falstead. Oh. That's good coffee. Yeah, it is. Uh, the ground floor is the parlor. And nobody goes in there much since my mother died two years ago. But once a week, I go in and I take a look around. When I went in yesterday, a mouse ran out from under the piano and went in back of the bookshelf. You believe a mouse can run up a woman's leg? No. No, neither do I. No. So, so I got my umbrella from the hall, and I poke around behind the shelves. But he didn't come up. Oh, must we listen to a Beatrix Potter tale? So, 
I took some books out. And in back of them was a little package I'd never seen before. Aha. Uh-huh. And I opened it. And that's what I brought. Yeah, it's, it's under the sofa, sir. I'll get it. We can split the reward three ways. You, me, and Buster here. Open it, Buster. All 20s, Mr. Wolf. How much? Two inches, uh, 250 to the inch. That would make it about... About $10,000. Very tidy, madam. It belongs in the hands of the police. Hey, no, you don't. You take it to the cops and good boy. Listen, whoever drove that car knew I had it and tried to kill me. I'll get it. All of a sudden, Grand Central Station. Yes, sir. My name is Albert Leach, U.S. Treasury Department, Secret Service Division. Here's my badge. Uh huh. That checks out. I'd like to speak with Mr. Wolf and Mr. Goodwin. Uh, Mr. Wolf isn't available. I'm Mr. Goodwin. Want to ask about a woman named Baxter? Is she here? Around 25, 5 feet 4, light brown hair, 120 pounds, fur coat. That fits? No. What do you mean, no? She's not here. Then how do you know? She was that? here this morning for about 10 minutes. Has she been back? No. Another woman. Hattie Annis, she been here? You know, Mr. Leach, I don't mind being polite, but what the hell? Mr. Wolf is a licensed private detective, and so am I. And we don't answer miscellaneous questions just to pass the time. I've heard of Hattie Annis because Miss Baxter asked if she'd been here, and I told her no. She asked me to phone her if she came, but I probably won't. I'm an officer of the law, good one, and an agent of the U.S. government. As I said, that checked out. And... I want to know if Hattie Annis has been here today. Why don't you ask her? Miss Baxter gave me the phone number. Here, you want it? I have it. I know your reputation, Goodwin, and Wolf's. Good. You may get away with a few fancy tricks with the New York City Police Department, but I advise you not to try any with the Secret Service. We'll be seeing you. Hold everything, Mr. Wolf. Those bills are counterfeit. Yes, we know that. You do? How'd you find out? Miss Anna's just told me so. You knew they were phonies? Of course. Why would he hide real money in my parlor? And why would I bring it to Nero Wolf? How did you find out, Archie? That was a T-man at the door. A what man? A T-man, a Secret Service agent of the U.S. Treasury. That's their job, counterfeiters. He wanted to know if a woman named Baxter was here this morning. Tammy and Baxter? I... Tammy Baxter was here? That's right, and he wanted to know if you were here, too, and I insulted him, so he left. <laughs> You insulted a tea man. Why didn't you show him in? And have her accuse me of substituting phonies for the real money she walked in here with? Hey, what did you say? Now call the Secret Service at once, Archie, and tell them it's here. If Miss Annis leaves before they arrive, keep the package and give her a receipt. Good day, madam, and please don't get up. Hey, don't you madam me. You mean that? Call the cops and hand it over? Not the cops, Miss Annis, the Secret Service. I have a responsibility as a citizen. Counterfeit money is contraband. I can't let you walk out with I'll it. I'll get up when I like, and I'll walk out when I hey, like. Steady, steady. Boot liquor. Hey, let me help the you. The great detective, Nero Wolf, just a flunky for the cops. Hey. If full staff was here, I'd apologize. Madam, I and cannot... And you can't glare me down. This lady is going to talk. Take now, it. Now, don't you touch me, Buster. Take it easy. You know better thinking I'll I pull a switch on you. It may be counterfeit money, but it's not your counterfeit money, it's mine. I find that stuff in my house. I'd rather burn it than turn it over to the cops. So I think I'll get a detective to find out who put it there. So I go to Nero Wolf, and this is what happens. You want to suck up to the cops? I spit at you. I don't spit, but I spit at you. Uh, uh, Miss Annis, you have a point. I reject the charge of civility, but uh, you have a point. Has a private citizen the right to confiscate contraband? I doubt it. That counterfeit money is yours until seized by public authority, which I am clearly not. I, uh, I confess to error, but I was prompted by expediency, not sycophancy. What? I merely wanted to get clear of the muddle. Now, I offer a suggestion. Mr. Goodwin will put the bills in my safe and go with you to your house to investigate. You uh, say you wanted to engage me to find the counterfeiter. Yes. Well, he will decide if that is feasible without an expensive inquiry. If it isn't, I'll return your property to you, but I'll notify the Secret Service that I am doing so. And in either case, 
I shall expect no fee. We split the reward three ways. I have no interest in a reward. Archie, be good enough to escort Miss Annie's home. Okay, there it is on the corner. Let's go. No, no, no. You wait for the green light. Can't you see that cop over there? That's all they're good for, waving their arms. Okay, now we can go. Why do you hate cops, Hattie? Now, don't you call me that. Not till I know I can trust you. Okay, Miss Annis. Why do you hate cops? My father. The cops shot him down. Huh? No provocation. He was just in the way. Never even apologized. Said it was a mistake. Ah! Mistake. That's all they ever make, mistakes. I'm... I'm sorry I opened the wound. Okay. Uh, listen, tell me about this Tammy Baxter. She must be involved somehow because that tea man... Nah, it could have been Tammy, Buster. Why not? Well, she only has one suit, two dresses, three blouses, two skirts, and her fur coat was rabbit. A counterfeiter would have had more clothes. Ah, uh, 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 I thought you said you never went into their rooms. Well, only when they arrived here. When did she arrive? Three weeks ago. What do you know about her? I don't ask for references. I just size them up, you know what I mean? Hey, here we are. Come on in. Hattie, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Where on earth have you been, or above it or beneath? Without you, this house is a sepulcher. There are no oranges. Oh. Oh, how'd you do, sir? Uh, Archie Goodwin, Raymond Dell. Mr. Dell plays Shakespeare. Oh, good for you, Sir Raymond. Oranges here in the kitchen, Ray. I went out and got some. Oh, listen, Hattie, do you know where? Oh. Uh, Martha Kirk, Archie Goodwin. And what do you play, Juliet? <laughs> Thank you, kind sir. But I'm not ready for that yet. Hmm. Hattie, do you know where Tammy is? Two phone calls, a man. No, I ain't seen her. Are you looking for a room, Mr. Goodwin? Uh, and Mr. No. Goodwin ain't in the theater, Raymond. He's a, a reporter. He come to write a magazine piece about me and my house. You mean we'll all be famous? Oh, something like that. Uh, come on, Mr. Goodwin. Uh, he wants to see the house. I hope the beds are made. We'll see you both later. Come and have brunch, Ray. Listen, have you seen the picture of How was that? Was that okay? Just fine. They're interested and that'll help. Is, uh, is this the part? Yeah, I got the blinds down so it's dark. Oh. Hey, hey, mind the sofa. I'll get the light. Oh, that's better. Hey, nice fire. Now, here we are. I put the books back like they were, but everything else oh, is just... Ho hold it. What's the matter, Buster? Come here. Behind the sofa. <gasps> easy. Oh. easy. Oh, my God. It's Tammy. Yeah. Now you'll... Never get your name up in lights. Yes? Me. Calling for Miss Annis's house to report a complication. Went into the parlor to look at the bookshelf and found Tammy Baxter on the floor with a kitchen knife in her chest. The girl who came in this morning and the tea man was interested in. I'm keeping my voice low because this phone is in the hall and there are people in the kitchen with the door open. I have my eye on it. Have you called the police? Miss Annis won't, so I'll have to. Uh, I suppose I ought to contact Leach, the tea man. Why him? To tell him the lady who's healthy was inquiring after is dead. But I need instructions. When I start answering questions, what do I save? Oh, not a... Again what? Again you! Hmm? Your talent for dancing merrily into a bog is extraordinary. I am not dancing and I am not merry. It would be a nuisance to have to explain why we postponed reporting that counterfeit money. Oh, that. Huh? I, I could omit the detail that we knew it was phony, at least until they find my fingerprints on oh, it. Oh, phooey! That woman has got us into the worst she, kind of... She says she's not going to see any cops and has locked herself in her room. Even if they break the door down, I doubt if they'll hear much. Now, one will get you ten. She won't even tell them where she went this morning. But if you prefer me to confess that I we know... I prefer to about obliterate about the entire episode. <laughs> Found the woman. She... Oh, all right. Omit that detail. Okay. Now I'll call the Marines. <laughs> I 
I know you, Goodwin. And I know Wolf. You say Wolf told her he wanted no fee and no reward, but he sent you here with her and you paid for the cab nuts. Inspector Kramer, I was just helping a nice old lady. Quit your clowning. It's nice to see you again, too, Mr. Leach. I told you we'd meet again, good one. I want to know. Look, I'm in charge here, Leach. Now, exactly when did you discover the body? I didn't look at my watch. That's a lie. With your training, you'd look automatically. Raymond Dell and Martha Kirk say you and Miss Annis left the kitchen just after one. And you call my office at 1.34 for half an hour. What were you doing? Getting Hattie Annis up to her room and talking her down off the ceiling so I could call you. She has a personal attitude toward cops. A cop shot her father. Yeah, 15 years ago. Hasn't she any sense? Uh, no. Oh, then I went to the John. Is that okay? No, it is not okay. You're getting in a deep trouble, Goodwin. I warned you not to try any tricks with the Secret Service, Goodwin. That you did, Mr. Leach. And at that very moment when I was asking you if Hattie Annis had been there, she was inside with Wolf. You just admitted it. You withheld information required by an agent of the federal government in the performance of his duty, and you'll answer for it. I'll answer now. Why should I tell you anything about anybody? If you had any proper ground for asking me about Hattie Annis, you didn't mention it. She and I found a dead body in her house, and it's Inspector Kramer's job to catch murderers, and it's just possible there's a connection between the package Miss Annis found and brought to Mr. Wolf, so I'll answer his questions. I can't think offhand of any question I owe you an answer to. You want to try I'll pick the time, good one, not you. Inspector, I'll be in my office if you get anywhere with this bunch. Listen, good one, we need your help here. What? Am I hearing you right, Inspector? Well, I'd love to help, honestly. I bet. Did you tell that Annis woman to bolt herself in? No, I told you just like it happened. Yeah. Well, she won't open the door. She won't open her trap. We don't want to smash the door unless we No, have she's to. not my client, nor Mr. Wolf's. Yeah. But wouldn't she open the door if you asked her nice? Mm. Probably. Okay, ask her. Only if you and your men stay down here with the door shut. And I mean down here. Okay, Goodwin. It's a deal. Buster Goodwin. I'm alone. Let me in. I want to ask you something. Where are they? They're downstairs. Look, I'm not a flunky. Okay. Get in here quick. Thanks. Hey, you might have brought me something to eat. You're no good. Well, if I'm no good, why'd you let me in? Because I thought you had something to eat. Actually, if I wasn't any good, would I bother to come and tell you to stay away from that door because they're going to bust it in? No, they won't. Why won't they? Because they know if they do, I'll shoot. You've got a gun? No, but they don't know that. Oh, sh May I have permission to call you Hattie? No. Not till I see what happens. Okay, Miss Annis. Now, here's a gen. If Inspector Kramer and his football squad have to smash that door down to get at you, it's an absolute certainty they'll take you downtown and hold you as a material witness. A witness to what? They're investigating a murder that occurred in your house, and you're a suspect, whereas if you hey, let them in hey, polite... wait a minute! I'm a suspect! Sure! Now, when you came home to sew the button on your coat, you could have done it then. You suspect no, me? No, no, of course not. Look, even if I'm no good, I'm not a half-wit. Hey, they'll have to carry me. They will. And in handcuffs. And they'll need them. All right, Buster. I've never hired a detective before. You want me to sign something? Who are you hiring, Miss Annis? I'm hiring you. Call me Hattie. Thank you. But you can't hire me. I work for Nero Wolf. Then him. To do what? What? To show the cops. Uh-uh. To make them wish they'd never set foot in my house. No To way. make them eat dirt. He wouldn't take the job. If you hired him to investigate the murder, he might fill your order on the side. But I... I doubt if you could afford it. I'll pay him $42,000, and that ought to be enough. <laughs> what do you sell besides the house, the yacht? Now, don't try to be funny, Buster. It's in tax-exempt bonds in the bank. You want me to sign something or not? Uh, that's not necessary now that I can call you Hattie. All right. You may not be available later today, so we'll leave it that you've hired Nero Wolf to investigate the murder. Now, if he doesn't take the job... Well, why I'll wouldn't he take the job? Because he's a genius and he's eccentric, and geniuses don't have to have reasons. Now, uh, you leave the door unbolted, and I'll tell Kramer... I will you... not! If they break in that door, they'll pay for it, Buster. 
Okay, okay. You have it your way, Hattie. And before I go, I might as well start earning that 42 grand. You got a stamp pad in that desk? Yeah. What for? Your fingerprints, Hattie. All ten. One of the rules in our house is no business talk at meals. And another is no business in the orchid rooms except in emergencies. There being no emergency except deciding whether he was going to work today or not, Nero Wolf took my report not in the plant rooms with their dazzling color, but in the potting room next door. Theodore was washing pots in the sink. Theodore, you must be very careful of this beauty. Don't plant her too deeply. Right? Now then, Archie, to your report. Thank you, sir. The main thing is I'm pretty sure Hattie Annis is on the level. You mean she's innocent of that girl's murder? I think so. On what grounds? Well, she couldn't possibly have been faking when we discovered the body. First she said to the corpse, right? Now you'll never get your name up in lights. Well, sentimental, but you're right. I doubt if she's capable of inventing it. Yeah, then she says, oh, no, that's the kitchen knife. Well, I mean, you know, how corny can you get? Huh. No, I'd never try to predict what the lady was going to do. But I know what she didn't do. She didn't kill Tammy Baxter. But what's the connection, then? What had the Baxter girl to do with Hattie Annis' counterfeit bills? I don't know. But there's got to be one. Because I called Kramer and Leach separately, and they both turned up at the house together. Coincidence? No, sir. They'd been talking. Planned a little campaign for handling yours truly. Uh, I must say, Kramer and Leach, neither of them asking if you knew the money was counterfeit. It's an insult to your intelligence and mine. My guess is Leach told Kramer not to mention it, because what Leach wants to find is a source. He'd rather catch an engraver than a murderer any day. And if counterfeiting was mentioned to me, I might mention it to someone else, like a reporter. God knows I wouldn't put it past you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Theodore. Splendidly potted. Oh, yes. Let me hold a little beauty. You're all right on, Archie. On. Next, Tammy Baxter was a tea woman. A tea woman? Well, you have tea men. You can have tea women. Oh. When Leach was here this morning, why didn't he ask me what Tammy Baxter told me? Because he knew she'd already reported to him. Also, he knew the phone number of that house. Said so. And Kramer. Why wasn't he more interested in my talk with Tammy only an hour before she was murdered? Because he already knew from Leach. Ah, then she'd been posted in that house by the secret police. What else? Someone who lived there was passing bad money. If they knew who, they'd know who killed Baxter. So I figure they don't. Oh, it's one of the four rumors, is that it? Mm, they all use the kitchen knife. Raymond Dell, who's an old ham, and then there's Noel Farris. He's a young, sensitive type. Paul Hanna, a character juvenile from Central Casting, and Martha Kirk, who has 20-year-old dimples and a nice smile. They work irregularly, but that's showbiz. Nonetheless, one or more may have an alibi. Jack. Oh, if Hattie Annis is your client, Go on. you probably want to phone our lawyer since you don't like leaving your clients in the call. Oh, poor lawyers cost money. Those bonds of hers may not exist. She's probably an indigent. Not a chance. She's my favorite screwball, but she's not a liar. I'm in her debt. She made Kramer ask me a favor. No. Oh. All right, then. Call Parker. Have him get her out on bail. Fine. Now that's settled, I assume you don't intend to let go of your client's property unless a court orders you to. What property? The package. According to Kramer and Leach, we're not supposed to have guessed the bills are phony. I thought I'd try the package for fingerprints, okay? No objection. Uh, but there'll be other prints than yours. Hers, for instance. How will you know them? I got hers before I left. You took a... There are seven good prints, 12 fair ones, and 14 smudges. The only ones you can identify are mine and Hattie's. Either he wore gloves or he wiped it. I... Confound you, Archie! You dropped the pot. Then pick it up! Yes, sir. No, no! You look after it, Theodore. Oh, confound you, Archie, I say again. Why ask permission for something you've already gone ahead and done? Because I had to know you'd taken her on as a client. Oh, phooey! Now what? Come... Excuse me, Mr. Wolf, but there's a party below wishing to see you. What party, Fritz? Didn't you tell him I'm busy? Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Dell, Ferris, and Hannah, and uh, Miss Kirk. All four of them. There's the limit. Did you invite the Archie? No, sir. It's a surprise party. Perhaps you'd be good enough to explain this intrusion. Are you the spokesman, Mr. Hanna? No. Go ahead, Martha. This was your idea. It was not, Paul. It was Hattie's idea, Mr. Wolf. 
Well, it's crazy. The idea that Hattie... Well, it's just crazy. It may well be, Miss Kirk. Mr. Ferris, what is she talking about? She means the idea that Hattie killed Tammy Baxter. It was Hattie's idea that we should come and see you. Crazy. It is not, no. Right, Raymond? Idiot children, snapping and yapping in the face of tragedy. Oh, shut up, Raymond. Death isn't tragedy. Life is tragedy. It isn't life or death. Was it Miss Annis' idea that the four of you should come and expound philosophy to me? Miss Kirk, do I gather she spoke with you? I was coming downstairs, and they were carrying her out, and she saw me and said she had hired you and Mr. Goodwin to make the cops eat dirt. And we had to come and tell you everything we told the cops. They were carrying her, literally, bodily? Yes, two men. Had they forced the door of her room? Yes. Possibly actionable. For the record, Miss Annis is my client, but my job is not what she said. It's to investigate the murder committed in her house. It was committed by a sex maniac. Twice last week, a man followed Tammy right to the door. Well, I offered to ambush him, but she said no. If he did it again, she'd handle him. She would, too. Sir Lockenvar Hanna. Damn clever, these sex maniacs. Must have had a set of keys and known exactly where to find the kitchen knife. You keep harping on that, Noel. I identified it because anyone could with that nick in it. I did. Oh, God. The thought that the knife I'd use so often to slice tomatoes. Spare us your sensitivity, Noel. We came here to serve a friend in whose debt we are, not to prattle. We know that Hattie was not herself. We cannot judge her. We can only ask, what can we do or say to help her? Hattie said we should tell Mr. Wolf everything we told the cops. That may not be necessary. When four people are conversing in my presence, and I know that one of them committed murder less than 12 hours ago, I'd be a dolt to get no inkling at all. You know it was one of us? How? Not by an inkling, Mr. Ferris. There is the knife. And there is my conviction on grounds to satisfy me that Miss Annis didn't use it. Three of you came here to help a friend. We all no, did. No, one of you came because you didn't dare to refuse. Nor will that one dare to refuse to answer my questions and thus expose himself or herself. If I fail, it will be because I haven't asked the right questions. And I don't intend to fail. Mr. Dell. Have you paid your room rent for the past three months? That's not the kind of question the police ask. No, but it's the kind of question I ask. Have you? You could just as well ask Hattie. I have paid no rent for three years. She has asked for none. Miss Kirk? Uh, does the question embarrass you? No. I've been there a year and pay five dollars a week. From current income? I haven't any. I'm attending a ballet school. I get a monthly check from my father. I see. Mr. Ferris? Uh, well, uh, I, I haven't figured it out. I pay her whatever I can, when I can. I've been there for 18 months. A little TV, a stage show, that lot. I take it you're a trifle behind. Mm. Mr. Hanna? I'm taking no dare. You say you know one of us killed Miss Baxter, but I don't believe you. Whoever killed her got into the house somehow and used the knife. Anyone could have. I ain't taken no dare. Your spunk is impressive, Mr. Hanna, but are you here to oblige your friend or to show off your conceit? I've been there for four months and I paid every week. That proves something for God's sake. That you are not a pauper. Now, Miss Kirk, for what you have told the police, one detail only. Where were you this morning? I slept in till about 11 got up and did my exercises in my room. About a quarter after 12, I came down, saw there were no oranges, and went out and got some. I, I wasn't gone more than 10 minutes. I was cooking up some breakfast when Hattie came in with Mr. Goodwin and said yes, she... Yes, that's far enough, thank you. Did you see any of the others this morning? No, not till Ray came to have breakfast or brunch. Huh. Mr. Dell, I know you came downstairs when Miss Annis entered the house with Mr. Goodwin, right, Archie? That's right, sir. And before that, Mr. Dell? Nothing. I was asleep. Then how did you know there were no oranges? What? Oh, well, I read late. Sophocles, Oedipus Rex, as a matter of fact. About five o'clock, I wanted an orange. There weren't any in the kitchen, so I went back up to my room. Ah, at night, you read. How do you spend your afternoon? What's that got to do with it? I'll be the judge. Oh. All right. 
I babysit. You what? I have a painter friend by name Max Ada who lives in an east side tenement. His wife is dead. He has two small children. From 2 to 7 p.m., I am their reluctant keeper. Are you happier knowing my shame? What is Mr. Ada's address? Oh, this approaches lunacy. His address is 314 Mission Street. Thank you. Mr. Hannah, since I'm now only asking for what you've already told the police, I hope you won't be provoked. <laughs> you do like hell. I left the house a little after 9 o'clock and spent a couple hours around the west side docks. What were you doing around the docks? Looking. I'm playing a longshoreman in a show at the Mushroom Theater. And then I hopped a bus downtown. I got to the theater just before 12. We just started rehearsing when a guy comes up to me and flashes a badge and takes me in for questioning. Where is the Mushroom Theater? Bowie Street. Do you have a leading role in the play? No. How many lines have you? Not many, uh, It's a small part. Hey, look. I'm just starting out, okay? Yes. And you, Mr. Ferris? Uh, you, you know, when the, the questions the cops asked me made me realize I was, I was actually suspected of murder, and I also realized I had no alibi, it looked pretty dark, Mr. Wolf. I thought maybe the others had solid alibis and could prove it, so I feel a lot better now. So I thank you, Mr. Wolf. Well, actually, I left the house a little after ten and called at four different agencies. Two of them might remember I was there, but... What kind of agency? Casting, theater, and TV. You visit them daily? About twice a week. On the other five days, how do you uh, pass the time? Two days, uh, so sometimes three. I make horses and kangaroos and other animals. I go to a workroom and model them and make molds. I get eight dollars for a squirrel, twenty for a giraffe. Where is this workroom? In the rear of a shop on First Avenue. Harry Zoo, it's called. The owner is Harry Arcasey. He has a sixteen-year-old daughter as beautiful as a rosy dawn buck. She <clears throat> is. Her name is a long character. Now, this is not a comedy, Mr. Ferris. I engaged to act for Miss Annis only five hours ago, and I, 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 I haven't arranged my mind. So my questions may be at random, but they are not frivolous. <clears throat> now that I have seen and heard all of you, I am better prepared. <clears throat> I, uh, I bid you good night and leave Miss Annis to thank you, three of you, for coming. The fourth will begin to feel the pinch. After I showed them out, I got back to Wolf in his office. He was leaning back with his eyes closed, a sure sign that he was anything but asleep. Then he opened them and shot me an order. Get Saul and Fred and Ari at eight in the morning in my room. Then he shut his eyes again. There's no use asking why he wanted to bring in the three best operatives south of the North Pole to the tune of a couple of hundred dollars a day plus expenses, but Wolf doesn't waste dough like that on a mere inkling. I never did get to find out why, because at 7.30 the next morning, Leach the T-Man turned up with a federal court order. He wanted the package. What the hell, I gave it to him. He gave me a receipt, and Kramer arrived with a state court order to pick it up as evidence in a murder case. All I could do was show him the receipt from Leach and suggest they split it half and half. Kramer became undignified. Damn you, Goodwin. Did you know that money was counterfeit? I told him point blank, no, and felt better. It's always a relief to get a lie off your chest, but ten minutes after he left, I got a phone call, an invitation I couldn't refuse to have coffee with the district attorney before it got cold. Good one, this is serious. Maybe the most serious trouble you've ever been in. It's up against stiff competition, sir. And I think you'll find it in your interest to overcome your tendency to crack wise. Yes, sir, we shall overcome. You've disposed of evidence in a murder case. I have? You deliberately arranged for Mr. Leach to beat Inspector Kramer to that package. I did. But well, Leach asked for it first, that's all. And I don't suppose you have any idea why the Secret Service was interested in that package? He kept me there for eight hours and didn't learn a thing. What I learned was that they hadn't got anything out of Hattie Annis either. They let her out on bail as a material witness. I figured Parker, the lawyer, would have taken her back to Wolf's. So that was where I hightailed it. I also had dinner in mind. What I didn't have in mind was another surprise party. 
I think you know everybody, Archie. Inspector Kramer, uh, Mr. Leach from Treasury, Miss Annis, her boarders, Mr. Dell, Mr. Hannah, Mr. Ferris, and uh, Miss Kirk, and, of course, Sergeant Stebbins at the door. Happy Thanksgiving or whatever. I hope I didn't interrupt. You already have. Thank you. Okay, Wolf, we didn't come here just to hear you speak. Oh, yes, you did. Well, if you've got something, let's have it. You know well enough I have something, Mr. Kramer, or you wouldn't have come. You told me on the phone that you had a stroke of luck. I did have, but I invited it. I knew where to send the invitation. In fact, I sent invitations to three different addresses by special messengers. An east side tenement, a shop on First Avenue, and a building on Bowie Street which houses a theater. I'm damned if I know what you're talking about. You don't. But the others do. Those places sound familiar, Miss Kirk? Yes, they do. The tenement, Mr. Dell, is where you, uh... Well, shall I use your word, babysit? If you must. And the shop... Harry's Zoo, if I remember correctly, Mr. Ferris, is where you work between engagements. The work is very artistic. I did not say otherwise. And the theater in the building on Bowie Street, Mr. Hannah, your stamping ground, I believe. You know I played there. I told you. Indeed you did. Okay, okay. So where did you have this stroke of luck? In a sense, at all three addresses. But my expectation was centered on one of them. When my expectation was realized, I was faced with the question whether to notify you, Inspector, or to notify Mr. Leach. And, uh, preferring not to choose, I asked both of you to come along with the others. Miss Annis, my client, was already here. Damn right I'm here. Yes. You, Miss Kirk, Mr. Dell, and Mr. Ferris had a right to be present. And as for you, Mr. Hanna, since you're both a counterfeiter and a murderer... That's a lie! Hold it, Hanna! Hey, you... Let go of me! Are you arresting him, Mr. Leach? No, Mr. Kramer. Are you? Nobody's arresting me. Let go! Sit down, Hannah. You're under arrest as the material witness in the murder of Tamiris Baxter. Watch that door, Sergeant. That's prudent, Inspector, since I have no conclusive evidence. Only, uh, talking to these people last night, I had uh, faint intimations. Miss Kirk. What about me? Unlikely. You go to ballet school, you exercise each morning, and receive a monthly remittance from your father, all of which can be checked. Mr. Dell? Have I done something right? Yes. You paid no rent for three years. Mr. Ferris? I knew you'd get around to me. Oh, an interesting possibility. But your statement that two of the agencies you visited yesterday morning might corroborate your whereabouts makes it improbable that... You followed Miss Annis here at the same time. So what? So, Inspector, my attention centered on Mr. Hanna. He'd lived there only four months. He paid for his room every week. He'd almost certainly lied when he said Miss Baxter had told him a man twice followed her to the door. Miss Baxter was an agent of the Secret Service of the Treasury Department. Who said so? No one, Mr. Leach. Mr. Goodwin inferred it. Didn't you, Mr. Goodwin? Well, I uh, ran it up the old flagpole. Listen, Goodwin. You have carried discretion to an extreme, Mr. Leach, in concealing your interest in the occupants of that house. What I told him. Finally, Mr. Hanna's account of his movements yesterday left him completely free up to noon. He could have followed Miss Annis here, then back to her house, stolen a car, and when she left the house a second time, tried to run her over, thinking she still had the incriminating package. Well, he failed. So that's of little consequence now. Damn little consequence in anything you've said so far. Oh, I could speculate further. Did he kill Miss Baxter because she'd seen him try to kill Miss Annis with the car? She was certainly in the neighborhood. And perhaps confronted him when he returned to the house? Oh, well, it's your job, Inspector, not mine, to screw a confession out of him. I've got nothing to confess. You're going to regret this, Wolf. You're going to regret it good. I think not, Mr. Hanna. Following my speculations, I sent three men to three addresses... Saul Panzer here, who leaves less to luck than any man I know, went to the Mushroom Theater. Three times he phoned a report, and the third time asked for reinforcements. In a word, he'd nosed around, abetted by the superintendent whose palm he'd oiled, and discovered that the third floor of the old building was occupied by a job printing shop with two presses and the usual engraving equipment. I gather there was a fight, as you may observe, from Mr. Panzer's blackened right eye. The two printers were at length subdued and tied up and now lie under the devoted surveillance of Fred Durkin and Ori Cather. That's breaking and entering, aggravated by assault, unless you've got the evidence. Oh, I have, Mr. Kramer. 
In behind stacks of paper on one of the shelves, Mr. Panzer found eight stacks of new $20 bills. And in a compartment in back of a cupboard are four engravers' plates that were probably used to make them. And one of the printers, Mr. Panzer is prepared to swear, aren't you, Mr. Panzer, said to his mate the words, I told you Paul would squeal. I believe, Mr. Hanna, your first name is Paul. I'll get you, Wolf. Grab him, Sergeant. Hold it right there, Hannah. So, gentlemen, I was faced with a dilemma. Since he was both a counterfeiter and a murderer, I leave it up to you, Mr. Leach, who has the priority. But since Mr. Kramer seems to have him under arrest... You see, Falstaff, I told you, don't trust the cops. <laughs> One day, three weeks later, Wolf and I were in the office disagreeing about something when we had a visit from Hattie Annis. She opened her handbag and took out a little package wrapped in brown paper, and we both thought, good Lord, she's found another one. But she put it to one side and brought out an envelope. This check you sent me, your letter says it's for my share of the reward, a hundred dollars. Did you keep your share? Uh, yes. Did you get yours, Buster? Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't believe either of you. And this bill, $5,000 for services and $621.65 for expenses. Buster, didn't I say I'd pay $42,000? I guess you did, yeah. Then here it is. Hey, last time funny money, this time bonds. I, I cannot accept these, Miss Anna. Oh, oh, you oh. can call me Hattie Falstaff. I've held out of these bonds since my father died. First time I ever signed them over. But it was worth every dollar of that 42000 to see you beat that Inspector Kramer at his own game. I didn't like what I saw in the paper where that uh, no good Paul Hannah had confessed. I got no use for nobody that confesses to the cops. But you, you two made the meat dirt. You gave me the best day of my life. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Mad uh, Miss Alice. Uh, Hattie. Yeah, Hattie, yeah. yeah Archie, you know, I think uh, a trust fund might be in order so that Hattie may have even better days to come. episode were Maver Moore as Nero Wolf, Don Franks as Archie Goodwin, and Cease Linder as Inspector Kramer. Joy Coghill was Hattie Annis, Brent Carver, Paul Hanna, Gilly Fennick, Raymond Dell, Lynn Griffin, Martha Kirk, Sandy Webster, Leach, Mickey Guadagni, Tammy Baxter, Peter Blay, Noel Ferris, and Frank Perry was Fritz. Music was composed and conducted by Don Gillis. Technical operations, John Jessup. Sound effects, Bill Robinson. Production assistant was Nancy McElveen. And casting consultant, Ann Weldon Tate. Counterfeit for Murder was written by Alan Osborne and produced and directed in Toronto by Ron Hartman. Next week, meet Tina and Carl. Mr. Goodwin, policemen asking questions has different effect on different people. Right. If you have a country like this one and you are innocent of crime, all the people of your country are saying with you when you answer the questions. Uh -huh. But two people alone can't answer policemen's questions anywhere in the world. It takes it whole country to speak to policemen, and Tina and I... We don't have it, one. The country we had once, it is no longer a country. It is just a place to wait to die. Who killed the cop in the barber shop? And who tried to kill the pretty manicurist? I started to scream, but it was too late. What started you to scream? Seeing him? 
hearing him? It was both. I was sitting in the customer's chair with my back to the door. I, I was just sitting there trying to think, you know. I know. And then there was this little noise behind me, like a, a stealthy step. Uh-huh. And I, I looked up and I saw him reflected in the glass right behind me with his arm raised. And I started to scream, but before I could get it out, he struck. Right, you were... You were sitting in the chair, this chair, with your back to the door like this, right? That's it. I was thinking and like... you saw his reflection in that crinkly glass partition there? Yeah. And you recognized him? Yeah. The glass is uh, crinkly. It'd be hard to get a clear reflection. You're sure you recognized him? Well, of course I'm sure. That's why I wouldn't speak to them. That's why I had to see you. Why did you have to see me? Because of who it was. Who was it? It was that one with the big ears. And the gold tooth, one they call Stebbins, or they call him Sergeant. Are you telling me that Sergeant Stebbins hit you with that bottle? Next week, Rex Stout's The Cop Killer, with guest stars Jackie Burroughs, Marion Waldman, and Arch McDonald. <laughs>